Okay, we were discussing about this interfacing of input output devices with the microprocessor. <coughs> so we have seen that we have two instructions for interfacing I/O devices. One is out, and one is in. Out with a 8-bit port address that can be any 8-bit address. Suppose we have 8 out 80H and you have in suppose 01H. Okay, so the purpose of this instruction is to transfer the contents of accumulator to a output device the port address for which is 80H. Okay, similarly, this instruction will get the data from the port which is identified by port address 01H and that data will go inside the accumulator in the microprocessor. Okay, and we have discussed the timing diagram how it is done. Okay, so since these instructions, these are two byte instructions, so first byte in the memory location. It is the opcode, the second byte is the port address. So this instruction is executed in three machine cycles. So first is your opcode fetch, then second is your memory read where you get the port address inside the processor and the third is input output write operation. Okay. So we have seen that in the last two machine cycles, the data from the accumulator is placed on the data bus and the input output write signal is activated along with the status signal IO slash M bar. So during that part your data from the accumulator it is placed on that output device. Okay. Now the question is how you basically assign a address to a port. Okay. So since it is an 8-bit address, so the port address can vary from 00 to FFH. It means you can interface 256 different devices with the processor. So but each port or each device should have a unique address so that when you place that address on the address bus, so that particular port is selected. And the data from that particular port should come inside the processor or the data from the accumulator should be uploaded on that particular port which has a unique address. Now how, how that is done that we will discuss. So we have seen that in the last machine cycle that was M3 which was input output write operation. So it is done, we have three clock pulses. Okay. So this is one clock signal. One T state T2, this is T3. Okay. So what we do when you get the port address inside the processor, in the last cycle, what is done? The port address is placed on the higher as well as the lower 8 bits AD0 to AD7 whatever may be the port address okay so if it is suppose 80 is H is the port address so 80 is placed on the higher order bits and 80 is placed on the lower order 8 bits and then at the same time you activate this ALE ALE goes from 0 to 1, your lower 8 bit address is unlatched. And apart from that, your IO slash M bar this signal must go from 0 to 1 to indicate that it is a input output operation. And simultaneously, in the second pulse or in the second T state, your write signal gets activated. Okay. Now in the first T state, your address is last. Now this address, uh, lower 8 bits, they are free to carry the data. So at this point, the data from the accumulator, it is placed on all this. 
enters a data bus okay so data from a it comes on the data bus and once you activate this write signal so this data will be placed on the output port okay and in fact we have generated one more signal here which was of course input output write which is gets activated when your write signal is zero and your input output port is one okay so this is basically the same as the signal but it is separately used for input output operation okay that you know this is what is done in the last machine cycle okay this is what we have discussed okay so in the first t state t1 the processor is busy in latching the lower 8 bit address okay because that has to be separated that you know in the next two machine cycles two uh, t2 and t3 the input output write signal is asserted it goes from 1 to 0 and the data from the accumulator is placed on the data bus so this data is now available on the data bus so it has to be latched before it is lost okay because after the out instruction there may be some other instruction and the processor will execute that instruction so you will lose this data so during these two cycles you have to latch this data which has to be put on some output device which has this address suppose 80h okay now you have to do two things one is one is that <coughs> when the output latch must be activated okay and how you assign a address to that latch so to that latch you connect some output output device okay it means the data from this data bus it is now basically connected to a latch 8 bit latch okay and to this latch you connect some peripheral device okay it may be simply led if it is a output instruction so you can connect a simple seven segment led display here with this latch or you can connect individual leds to this latch okay so this is connected to the data bus and this is connected to your output connected to your peripherals output devices okay now see the data is from the accumulator is available on the data bus during this time period t2 and t3 it means during that time period what we have to do this data has to be latched by a latch okay so to this latch you will connect a peripheral device output device okay now <coughs> and how it is to be it has to be done it means this latch should be activated when a unique address that is supposed for the port address I am saying ATH is the address so when a unique address is available on this latch on this address bus and at the same time when input output write signal is activated okay so at that time this latch must be enabled so this latch should be enabled by a signal so this is enable pin active high pin suppose so this last has to be enabled when a unique address corresponding to this latch that is placed on the address bus that is suppose 80 and at the same time when your input output write signal is activated at it goes low so both these things must happen it means this latch must be enabled taking into account this address as well as this control signal okay so what is basically done this address is 7280 this is decoded first to generate a unique pulse which is called as input output address pulse okay so this is active low pulse okay this is some decoder circuit here 
it may be simply some logic gates or you can use a decoder like like we have used in the memory interfacing circuits okay what is the purpose of this that when a particular address a unique address is placed on this bits input that is address bus a0 to a7 it should generate a unique pulse which is active low pulse okay it means if suppose i am saying that okay the port address is if i want to assign a port address 80 to some latch or to some output device it means when i place 80h on these pins only then it should provide a signal here which is active for all the combinations this output must remain at logic 1 okay this is what is input output address okay so you are getting a unique address pulse corresponding to a unique address which is placed on the address pulse this is one thing okay the second thing is that now when your input output write signal it goes low it means now combining by combining these two pulses one is from the address when is particular address is available on the address bus which is used to identify that port and the second is that when your input output write signal it goes zero so when both these signals are zero your output should give a high pulse which is called as chip select pulse okay. or we call it as device select pulse okay and now this device select pulse is basically connected to the enable pin of this latch okay so you have input this is now data bus connected to the data bus and your output of the latch is connected to your peripherals or output devices okay this is how the interfacing is done using a latch okay so now what will happen <coughs> suppose you have said that okay 80h is the address of a output port to which some LED displays are connected okay and you want to send some data from the accumulator to this output device or to this output port okay so once the processor executes this instruction out 80h in the first two machine cycle this is of code fetch and the memory read that is done and in the last machine cycle when it comes to input output write the processor will place this address on this address bus okay now when when this address is placed on this address bus at the same time this decoder will get activated and a unique low pulse will be generated at this pin okay and at the same time when the input output write signal gets activated by the processor so these two signals will be combined together using some logic circuit to generate the active high pulse which will be used to enable this latch and once this latch is enabled the data which is available on the data bus it will come to the output device okay so this is how you assign a port address okay let us suppose we have one more instruction you have out 0 1 h okay it means in this case the port address is 0 1 or the output device it is identified by address that is 0 1 so when the processor will place this address 0 1 in the last machine cycle on the address bus then only this will give a active low pulse here for all other combinations its output will remain at logic 1 and when this and this signal both are at logic 0 then only your output of this logic circuit must go high so that it will be enabled only when this address is available on the address bus and simultaneously when the processor asserts this control signal input output right operation okay so for any other any other operations suppose if you have instruction out 70h okay and this port has a now address is port 01 so when this out 70 is placed this is executed so 70h is placed on the address bus so this decoder will not generate a active low pulse it will give you active high pulse as a result 
this active high pulse and this is active low pulse if you combine them this logic circuit will not provide a logic one signal this should provide a logic one signal only when both the pulses are at logic zero okay and this will provide a logic zero pulse for a particular address okay so that address you have to define okay so how we define that address or that we will see so that it gives a unique pulse unique address pulse for a particular one combination of 8 bits only for all other combinations it should not give active zero otherwise there is no meaning of this unique address now okay this is how it is done now see to take it more practically suppose we will take a case where we have an instruction out 01h it means the port address is 01 the output device which is connected it is identified by 8 bit address that is 01 now how we assign this address 01 okay it means when 01 is placed on the address bus in that case your this decoder this address decoder or this address pulse it should provide a logic zero pulse okay so you can use simple combination of the logic gates like suppose if i use a nand gate okay and now we have input is a0 to a7 because this external hardware circuit will decide what port address basically you are assigning to a particular device okay so i am saying okay my port address is 01 okay so 01 means it is 00 00 00 00 01 this is port address 8 bit port address okay it means input output address pulse this should provide a active loop pulse only when this combination is in available at the input of this circuit okay so you can simply use a logic circuit in which you connect a1 direct a0 which is this bit a0 this is your a7 so you directly connect a0 with this NAND gate and all other bits you connect them through some inverters okay this is a1 similarly a2 a3 up to a7 okay now say if the input to this logic circuit is 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 so in that case this these zeros will be complemented by this inverter you will get 1 and this is already 1 so 1 at the input of this NAND gate your output will become 0 here for this combination okay and if you take any other combination if you make this port 0 this bit 0 so one input of NAND gate if an input of NAND gate is 0 your output will be 1 okay so if apart from this address if you place any address or any bit combination if you apply any bit combination to this input so one of the inputs to the NAND gate will become 0 and if any one is 0 your output is going to be Okay, it means if my port address is 01H, so I should have a logic circuit like this to create a unique input output address pulse. Okay, now this unique output address pulse will be combined with your input output right signal, which is a control signal that is generated by the processor, and you now these two has to be combined. Another gate, logic gate, this is post gate G1. So you have to use another logic gate, some G2, which will generate an output pulse which is active high, which will be used to enable a particular patch to which you have connected some peripherals. Okay, so it is active low, this is active low pulse. What I want at the output is a logic high pulse. When it is 0, it is 0, your output should be 1. So you must use a logic gate. So which logic gate has to be used? Okay. It means see, I am using a combination of this. This is input output address. One input. 
second input is input output right so it can have four combinations of course 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so what we desire is what should be my output that when both these pulses are at logic 0 then only it should give you a empty high pulse for rest of the case it should give you 0 okay so this can be simply implemented using a nor gate right so if it is 0 0 your output will be 1 if any one of these bits is 1 so your output will be 0 it means at the output of this now I have to use a NOR gate which is basically connected as negative AND gate ok so this is same as this so in books it is written like in the form of negative <coughs> AND gates ok so it will generate active high pulse so this is x e this is x this is if this is x this is y so what will be your output this is x bar y bar okay so output is x bar y bar now <coughs> and if you see the output of this this is x this is y what is output it is x plus y bar which is same as x bar y bar okay so they both are basically same notations are only different so this gate g2 will now provide me active high pulse when both the inputs are at logic 0 and of course this will whenever the processor has to do some input output read or write operation write operation this signal has to be activated by the processor but this signal will get activated only when a particular address is available on the address bus okay it means when 0 1 is placed on this address bus and your input output write signal is activated at that time only this gate will produce a active high pulse which is now device select or input output select pulse and this pulse you will connect to the enable pin of the latch so you have a latch here so this latch will get enabled so the input of the latch is now connected to your data bus that is d0 to d7 and the output of the latch is connected to your Peripheral devices, so you may simply have some. You can use some maybe diodes here. So I suppose you use this is one diode. Similarly, you can have another LED. These are current limiting resistors. Okay, so connected them to VCC. Similarly, all this. Okay. this is how you can interface LEDs with this microprocessor okay you cannot directly connect LED with the processor you have to use some interfacing device for that okay and for that one option is this that you have to connect those both peripherals whatever it is to a latch okay so 8 bit latch and this latch must be enabled by using a particular address so now this latch is assigned the address of 0 1 h ok so you can say ok we have one port in the processor now one output port with address 0 1 ok so this is how what we have discussed so if you write out 0 1 h now instruction and if you have this interfacing with the microprocessor whenever this processor will execute this instruction so the data from the accumulator will be placed on this latch ok so if the data is supposed uh, you can say if your accumulator has any data suppose 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 ok it means that data will be placed on the output of this latch it will come here ok so if it's higher bit so first four bits they are one last four bits they are zero okay now how this led will glow since we have connected this speed uh, terminal with the positive vcc plus vcc 
it means the end terminal must be connected with the ground in order to make this LED functional. So in that case, this terminal should be connected. Now see inside this latch, you know what we have? We have basically simply flip flops, three flip flops inside the latch. Okay. And this enable pin is connected to the enable pin of each latch. Okay. So whenever this latch is enabled, whatever is the data at the input that comes at the output. Okay. So it is already connected to VCC. So it means it the end terminal it must be connected to the Q bar. Okay. Because it should be logic zero, then only it will glow, it will give you part of the current. Okay. So it is connected to Q bar second terminal of this because when so if this is one it means your led should glow okay so one means this is connected to vcc so this should be at logic zero so if it is zero here it is connected to q bar so q bar will be at logic one now okay so it will not have sufficient current to make this led turn on okay the another option is that you can connect this in the reverse direction so you may have a connection like this where the end terminal is connected to your ground and in that case the speed terminal of this LED must can be connected to the Q of the LED this is a D latch okay so if it is connected to Q now when it is 1 here 1 will come here and it is 0 so this LED will glow but in that case this because see, in that case, the current has to be supplied by this day light, day flip flop. Okay, so the flip flop may not be able to supply enough current to make this LED glow. Okay, so this is a best choice that you connect the P terminal to the VCC and connect the N terminal to the Q bar of this day light. So whenever you want to glow an LED, it means you have to put one at that particular pin. So by placing one, you it. Since the end terminal is connected to Q bar, it is connected to ground. So this D latch will basically, this D flip flop will basically give a path to the current through the Q bar terminal. Okay. So this is how the address is assigned to a particular device. Okay. Now suppose if you have some more, uh, if you use, if you want to assign, so now using this circuit, this circuit you can assign any address to any output device okay so if you have suppose if you want to assign the address 80h to some output port or output device so it means when the input combination so 80h means it is 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 okay so when this combination is available on the address bus then only this latch has to be enabled so for this you have to simply what you have to do is you have to modify this hardware circuit okay it means in place of this circuit if i use a circuit like this where i connect a7 to the nand gate and all other bits if they are connected through inverters with the nand gate up to a0 what will happen now? So when you place address 1000000, this is 80, it will give me an active flow pulse. Okay. For all other combinations, this will remain at logic 1 and your chip will not be, this latch will not be enabled. Okay. So when the processor places now this address 80H on the address bus and when it assets this control signal input output right, this logic gate will give me active high pulse okay and that active high pulse will basically enable this latch now to this latch your data bus is connected so whatever is the data from the accumulator which is based on the data bus that will come at the output so to this output you can connect some output device okay so this is how we interface the peripheral devices using the out instructions or how you assign basically a unique address so you can have 256 such 
different ports or latches and to 56 devices they can be connected okay but at a time you have you can communicate with one device only so how you communicate with that device that depends upon the address of that device so that address must you know so to design that address you have to design some external hardware logic circuit so this external hardware logic circuit will decide the address of that latch to which you want to send some data okay so next we will see that how you interface this input uh, device so the this concept is now very much same in that case the data from the output or the input device it has to come inside the processor it means instead of using this control signal input output write the processor will generate input output read signal okay and that input output read signal along with your this input output address signal it will again enable a latch okay now the data from the input is now will be available on the latch and the output of the latch is connected to your database okay so that that comes inside the processor and goes into the accumulator okay